Okay, everybody, welcome back to another YouTube hit. Uh, now we're finally ready to write the final draft of the research paper. So once you've received your intro paragraph and body paragraph organization back from me, you're going to see a lot of comments in the margins. They'll kind of pop up over here. You want to pay attention to those comments because they are there to help make sure that as you write the final draft of your paper, uh, your grade is going to be outstanding because you've made some adjustments and revisions. So any suggestions that I make over here are probably pretty important to consider as you type the final draft of your paper. Uh, so when you go into the stream you will see that there is um, a final paper template that's been posted and when you open it it looks something like this. Uh, looks pretty daunting, right? It's completely blank compared to some of the other things that we've done this year. So um, just so you don't feel so lonely, if you were to scroll down to the second page, you would see the rubric down here. And this is how I'm actually going to be grading the papers. You may want to look at that at some point, but nothing should be a big surprise. And we'll talk more about making sure that your paper is proofed and ready to go um, in another video before we actually turn this thing in. So you will start by just putting your name, the period, and your research paper topic. This really helps me get focused on what it is you're trying to uh, analyze in the paper. It just helps me as I shuffle through over a hundred of these over the next couple of weeks. Um, so I have my example paper here and I've kind of filled it in so it gives you a good idea of what to do. But um, the first thing you want to do, it's a really easy start, is to take the introductory paragraph from your notes that you turned in and just cut and paste it out of here and put it into the paper itself. If I have said that your intro looks outstanding, then by all means, there's no reason to recreate it. Just dump it into the paragraph. Notice that as I did this, I um, am making sure that I go through and format it so that it looks like a paragraph. Uh, paragraphs are always indented, and in order to indent, if you just hit the tab bar, it puts that first line uh, in about eight or 10 spaces. Um, and then I'm, you know, if, I, if you've separated the hook from the bridge or background information, from the claim, you need to smush it all back together so that it looks like an actual introductory paragraph. So the intro is pretty easy uh, because you're mostly just cutting and pasting it in here, but now it's time to start really structuring those body paragraphs. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about this um, in this video. So I go back to my uh, organization sheet, right, my, my second outline here, and I see that body paragraph number one for my topic was that I was going to discuss when and why the Google car was invented. And I gave myself a little bit more information here. I want to start with just taking this information and putting it into my final paper template. This becomes kind of the topic um, or the focus for this first body paragraph. So let's see, sorry, I opened the wrong one. So here we go. Uh, the Google self-driving car has been develop in development mode since 2010. It has over 2 million driving miles. Um, on the Google website, it explained that the cars, and then I go into a direct quote here. Um, so one of the things that we haven't discussed yet is introducing our quotes and not just dropping them into our papers, trying to make sure that we um, kind of set the quote up before we, before we actually plop the quote in there. So I'm setting this quote up by saying that on the Google website it explained that the cars, and then you see here, I know, whoops, that it is now, sorry about that, that this is now the beginning of this direct quote because it has quotation marks around it. This quote covers this entire section of the body paragraph. It's a couple of sentences long, um, but it talks about how the Google cars work and that they have sensors designed to detect objects as far as two football fields away. Then notice at the end of the quote, I do not have a period inside this uh, quotation mark. Instead, I've put the parentheses to open up the in-text citation. I've put in quotes Google Car Project because that's what showed up on my source sheet. That's how the citation is going to be found in my Works Cited page. And then in this case, it had a page number. So I use the page number. If your citation does not have a page number, you just don't put anything. Then you close the quote, and finally, the period that would have gone at the end of the sentence over here now goes at the end of the parentheses over here. And that shows the reader that this is all one complete thought. Okay, you see in this um, example here that I have a little comment over on the side that says, pay close attention to how I have iced this quote and how the in-text citation is set up. So I've gone over how the in-text in -text citation works. 
but I want to point out to you that there is a resource in your uh, Google Stream that says notes on quotes, how to ice. And icing means that you are going to introduce, cite, and explain your quotes. Again, you don't want to just drop quotes into your body paragraphs. You want to give the reader a little bit of an introduction. There are some strategies here to do that. You want to make sure that you use the quote and then cite it, right? So that's what this citation component of this worksheet goes over. And then finally, you want to make sure that you explain the quote. This is the last step of using quotations. So it is important to make sure that after you've inserted a quote into the paragraph that you've done something to explain that quote. Uh, there's an example here in uh, this worksheet that's posted in the stream, and I'll show you how I do it in my paper as well. So I've talked about how the Google car works here with this quotation that we've gone over. And then I go on to say um, that so far in te the test driving phase, these cars, and there are over 30 of them on the roads in California, um, that there have been fender benders, but typically because of rear end accidents. So I'm trying to support that these sensors are really doing the trick. Okay, so again, the point is that you don't begin or end a paragraph, a body paragraph specifically, with a direct quote, that you always have some information supporting or explaining the quote afterwards. So I've gone on to talk about how uh, in the test driving phase of the Google car, there have been fender benders, but typically they're because of rear end accidents, which wouldn't be a result of an issue with the car or the computer system itself. Um, but then I go on and I, I, I've actually inserted a second quote into this body paragraph and I'll show you why in a minute. So once again, I'm using that icing strategy. I'm introducing the quote. As recently as September 25th, 2016, there was a T-bone style crash. And I go right into the quote itself. A Google spokesperson said, and this is what they basically said, that their car was at a green light for at least six seconds before it entered the intersection. Um, thousands of crashes happen every day on U.S. roads and not... Uh, excuse me, and red light running is a leading cause of urban crashes in the U.S. So what they're trying to essentially do is stand up for the safety record of the car. Um, again, after the quote, I have cited it. It came from theguardian.com, and you notice once again that the period goes outside of the parentheses here. So in this body paragraph, I did insert two direct quotes. Um, that's a strategy you may want to consider for some of your body paragraphs. But notice that I'm not stringing the quotes together, that they're actually separated. Here's the second quote right here, so you can visually kind of see it. Um, and I'm really trying to make sure that I'm, I'm spreading out uh, my information with some of my own thoughts and analysis. So if you do choose to use two direct quotes in a body paragraph, make sure that there's some of your own thoughts and language uh, mixed in there as well. Remember some of those tips and rules that I've provided for you are that is that about 75% of your paper should be your own um, original thinking and about 25% of it should rely upon direct quotes. And if you look here, you can see this highlighted stuff. These are my direct quotes. It probably represents about 50% of this body paragraph. But again, this was all my introductory paragraph was all my own thoughts and language. So something to consider as you as you are writing your paper. Okay, so let's say I think my first body paragraph is done. Um, I go down here and look at body paragraph number two and what I had said the topic of it was going to be, which is how the Google self-driving car works. When I go back into my paper itself and I'm kind of reading through things and getting myself organized, I realize Ugh, this quote that I use here, the sensors probably works best in that second body paragraph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut this out of here. This is part of the editing and revision process that you need to be willing to work with as you're writing this paper. Um, but I'm realizing that, hey, we're going to talk about um, when it's been developed and how it works. Uh, and then I want to use that quote now in the second body paragraph. So for now, I'm just going to put it here and I'm going to start to build the body paragraph around it. It is okay to edit and revise as you type this paper. In fact, that's an important step of this process. Every time you come back to the paper, I'd suggest that you go to the beginning and read it through from the beginning, just so that you are kind of making sure that it makes sense in your mind and from your perspective uh, before we get into the peer editing um, phase of this thing. So as you can see, I'm not going to go over every body paragraph, but as you can see, as you start to pull information out of your intros, um, and your paragraph organization here, it's really starting to become a paper. It looks, excuse me, looks like a paper, right? Has that in-text citation um, inserted right into the middle of these body paragraphs. 
that's something that you already have in your notes um, and just making sure that you're supporting the information you have and defending your claim making sure that every body paragraph is kind of building up to your defense of your claim again my claim is that i think the google self-driving car is going to revolutionize the driving experience and that it's going to be a safer and more efficient form of travel and i'm starting to build my case build my evidence and proof and defense of that claim so you will go through and do this and as you do it again don't spend a whole lot of time tinkering with the font or any of that sort of stuff uh, i've made mine a little bit bigger for this video but yours will be at the default setting I think it's Arial 11. Um, so don't spend any time messing with that because I'm going to ask you to keep it how it's set when you actually turn it in. So good luck. Come back and forth to this video if you need to to just kind of remember some, some of the components of it. But the most important thing is to recognize how to put these in-text citations in here.